This is the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show. Welcome back in Haley Stasiak and Jordan Ham. Joined, joined now by Arizona University's Ralph Amsden. Ralph, we know you're a busy person all over the place with ASU football and high school football, so we appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thank you. I'm, I'm always excited to hang out with you guys. So we are just past the halfway point of the season. It's flying by. The month of October is here. Let's get started with your overall thoughts on this season of Arizona high school football. What have you seen? Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of the bounce back years. Um, Brophy obviously, you know, made the playoffs, I think, 11 straight years before going one and nine last year. I, I love what they're doing with a strong defense and a young core on offense. Um, I, I love that Douglas went 0-10 and, and they've already got five wins. You know, the whole old Buddy Ryan uh, line, you can't call us losers anymore. Uh, and then uh, and then Arcadia is, is in the same boat. You know, they've fallen off in the last couple of weeks. But I really like to see uh, teams that had a down year rebound like that. That's been one of the things that stood out to me the most. The other thing is just that uh, 5A is what we thought it was going to be as far as just being very, very strong and difficult week in, week out, which is – what makes what Centennial is doing every single week that much more impressive. We've seen some teams that have overcome adversity from just slow starts in the early season and then have picked things up now. What team, uh, in your opinion, has improved the most from the beginning of the season? From the beginning of the season, well, you know, it's, it's tough because we're still trying to kind of suss out, like, what, what transfers are going to be contributing mm -hmm. um, to each team as they go. But you have to give credit to Castile, who – was shut out for three quarters at Centennial, scored 19 in that fourth quarter, uh, and then from there is turned around and, and, and really put a hurt on a couple of teams and then lost to Williamsfield and rebounded by coming out and, and putting up over 50 against Higley at Higley. So I, I, I've, it's been interesting to see them get acclimated to 5A over the course of the year. Um, and then you have teams like Valley Christian mm -hmm. who um, – you know, took down what I consider to be the number one team in all of 3A last week on the road uh, as they've gotten Matt McCrate back. And you have to wonder if, if you know, this is a team that could compete in, in 3A because you, they beat the best. I mean, the results are there, uh, but obviously they're sitting at 3-3 three and three right now, so it'll be interesting to see what they do from here as well. Ralph, you track the in-state recruiting very closely as, as well as ASU's recruiting efforts. We sat together in the offseason and listened to Al Luganville over at ASU talk about how they're going to, uh, their approaches for their recruiting efforts moving forward. Uh, when we look at this in-state class that has committed to ASU, it seems like they're getting guys early, trying to offer them early and be one of the first schools on there. Just what's your assessment of that approach so far in the, the in-state class that ASU has? Well, I mean, what we listened to Al Luganville say was look somebody like me in the face and say, I don't trust guys like you, and he shouldn't. At schools, if they have the resources and ability, should be going out and doing their own evaluations. Now, I'm not responsible at Rivals for what somebody's uh, star rating is. I'm, you know, I'm able to contribute and talk to them about players that I've seen and everything like that. But colleges should absolutely not be resting on the word of, of, of anybody else or the hype um, that anybody else puts out there, they should be putting energy into making sure that they're getting the right fit for their program. And they have an entire scouting department there. So when we say that Andre Johnson or Anthony Cooper or Roman DeWiss or guys like that are two stars, they're looking at them and saying, no, these are guys that we can, these are big, tall, fast guys that we can develop and keep here over a five year period. I like what they're doing. You do need game breakers. This is the same Arizona State that let you know Christian Kirk go, and you saw what he was able to do elsewhere. They, they, they've had that, um, they've had that issue, that bugaboo of not getting the top guys, and I think it will ultimately hurt them to not have somebody like Jake Smith. It will ultimately hurt them if they're not able to land a Ty Robinson who was at this last week's game um, against Oregon State. You know, they they do need to balance it out with some of those guys that can go in and make a huge impact immediately. But the ones they have are really, really strong core players and players that I'm uh, I'm genuinely a fan of. And and then you look at a guy like Connor Soley who may who may end up being one of the most impactful players out of this entire uh, class, the way that he's shown that he can be a game breaker on the field. As we look at this 2019 class here in Arizona, there are some guys that may be getting overlooked now by Division One schools, but who do you think could have a late surge in their recruitment as we get closer to these two signing days? 
Gosh, that's so tough because there's there there are a lot of really good players, but with JUCO going away, with not a lot of schools anticipating the flood of talent that came out of Arizona this year, you know, 16 players went Power Five last year, um, and this year we've probably got about 50 that are at that Power Five level, and probably 40 that are going to be able to to play and commit um and you have very very talented athletes who are just now getting on the field for the first time like alfonso taylor out at north canyon who probably has d1 ability um you know it's really really tough to tell often offensive linemen will sort of come on strong or 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 come on late that you know i I went out to glendale the other day and there's a, a 6 3 280 guard with a fantastic frame named marcello signs who I thought would make a great interior lineman for, for, for somebody, a nice project. Uh, and so, you know, you, you never really know. There are so many this year that it's hard to tell. I saw that you guys, you know, Jason Jewell and Brad Sessman talked about Zach Nelson. That's an excellent example, but is Zach Nelson going to get his before Hendricks Johnson at Boulder Creek, uh, you know, get, get some attention? There's so much competition for the few scholarships that are available that unless Arizona gets some more teams to come in and recruit here, whether that's at the Division II level, uh, or the FCS level, or the Pac-12, that some of these guys just aren't going to be able to find homes. That's how deep the talent is in the state this year. Lots of good games coming up this Friday. We've seen a lot of good high school football already. Who is your team to watch in this last half of the season? Hmm. Uh, well, the la- <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm I'm paying for backing Skyline uh, uh, before the season. I thought that they, you know, they had like a three-year starter at, at quarterback. They had a three-year starter at uh, running back. They had a fantastic um, offensive line. They've got one of the best young linebackers in the state. They've got one of the best athletes um, in, in, uh, in, I think, Solomon. Um, you know, the, the, he plays on both sides of the ball. They, they, I thought that they were equipped to make a run, and now that they're kind of out of it, uh, I, I'm looking at them like maybe they could potentially be uh, a spoiler. Um, and then I, I also look at the teams that have just been consistently good, like Queen Creek. And if they can just keep hammering away, you know, maybe they're maybe they're somebody who could really be a challenger um, in six A and could come out and be spoiler for a team like uh, for a team like Pinnacle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Chandler's going to be pretty tough to beat at this point. Centennial is going to be pretty tough to beat uh, at this point. The other thing is you look at a Notre Dame who's 7-0, and and you think to yourself, who have they really played? And that's why this week's game against Horizon is so important. Uh, Horizon is a team you should definitely keep an mm-hmm. eye on. There are, there are really so many. And then at the 4A level, you know, you, you have these undefeated teams that we're not sure about. I know Eric Sorensen is going out to check out Bradshaw Mountain to see if they're the real deal. Yep. Glendale is as good. Good in their, you know, in their starters as anybody I've seen uh, in 4A outside of Saguaro, but they don't really have depth behind that. Um, so I'm just, I, I look at these undefeated teams that the AIA formula just absolutely loves as far as the playoff goes. And if they don't slip up, then they're going to be positioned to have really, really good places, uh, you know, seedings in the playoffs, and maybe they can do some damage from that point on. How about teams that have surprised you? Maybe a team that has gotten off to or at, at this point in the season has a better record than you anticipated or a team that doesn't have the record that you anticipated at this point? Well, I mean, I'm a little bit surprised by Mountain Point um, because, you know, I, I went out to see them in uh, in the off season and they just look so long and so athletic, not as deep as they usually are, um, but, but it... it it feels like maybe they're just now starting to figure things out. You know, they put up 48 on a Highland team that was undefeated, uh, a Highland team that held Desert Vista to 24 the week before. So, you know, here they are heading into a Tukey Bowl where it looked like Desert Vista was going to take that back for the first time since 2011 to possibly being the favorite in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they, they've surprised me with not necessarily meeting my expectations uh, from the gate, but then they've also surprised me with how they've kind of been able to to rebound. Uh, the other one is Basha. Um, Basha, I think, gave up an average of 40 points a game over a four-year period, uh, and this year they gave up only 13 points to an O'Connor team that had, uh, you know, 68 against Perry. They gave up 20 points to a Highland team that had 70 against Boulder Creek. 
Um, Basha's defense, it's full of seniors. Um, you know, they got, they got some really great guys out there, you know, Parker Lewis, um, Micah Harper. They've got some really good players on that defense, but they're so senior heavy and they're so experienced. Um, that they might fall off a little bit next year, but the the improvement that they've had from last year to this year is one of the most shocking things that I've seen. I never could have anticipated that. Ralph, good stuff as always. Again, we appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you on the sidelines this season. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Love you, Ralph. (laughs) Ralph Amson of Arizona Varsity always gives us great stuff, just so plugged in on the high school front, as well as that recruiting front in the ASU sector. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about our teams to watch, our sleeper teams, and the teams that have surprised us this season. Keep it on the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show.